Okay, welcome everybody back to Misunderstood. I'm Rachel Yucatel. My next guest really needs no introduction, Cato Kalin. He is the world's most famous house guest who became a household name during uh, the O.J. Simpson trial when he was the star witness for the prosecution. Today, we are here to talk about that with him, but more importantly, to talk about the person behind the headlines. So Cato, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy you're here. Well, Rachel, you're gorgeous. Thanks for having me. And I'm so happy to say that I I do own my own couch. Thank oh, you so good. Much. Well, you know what's funny? It's amazing. So, but my biggest question that I have for you is, do you have a guest house yet that somebody else lives in? That is that is the goal I have. But I do have, I, I have like uh, probably three months more of my payments and I own my own house. So uh, how dumb would that be for me to actually live in the guest house and not in the main house? There we go. Gato, what are you doing? Move right. into the main house. But one day you have to have a guest in the guest house. Yeah. I 100%. I, you know, I travel so often and I, I, that's what everybody pretty much says. That it's like people will offer me to stay at their house or their guest house constantly. Please be our guest house for the weekend. And I thought, boy, this might be a really good job. It's just to go to places and live in their homes because people yeah. just want me to have their phone machines. And now, you know, people have this company called Cameo. And now it's like all these things I've thought of that became other people became billionaires. I said, how great would that be? The crash. And, and by the way, I've been invited this week. Uh, all these people always ask me to be in their weddings. I, I don't know them, but for some reason, people come up to me and they, say, they feel like they know me. And maybe they feel the same way about you. I, I just, they all feel like they know me, which of course they don't, but they, but they're always smiling and they laugh. So it's a good sign. Right. Well, so, but you're so beloved, actually. I mean, I feel like you did oh, get, you, you had a very hard time during the trial and we'll get into that in a minute, but I, I feel like your personality really stands out and people can't help but love you. So what do you think is the most misunderstood thing about Cato Kalin, the thing that people think they know? Well, I, I think part of it was back back then, the the court of public opinion already made their verdict on me of being a, uh, a you know an airhead, someone that didn't work, a pariah, you know, an assassin's target. I had all these things going against me, and I said, "Oh my God!" I was, and I start thinking about my life. I go, I was the high school quarterback. I was, I was the prom king, and I never had people not like me. And I was like, I never felt it before, and it, it made me very introverted. And I, I just, I, it never ever stopped working, always hustling. So I think when the media portrays you as a, a lie that really affects you. But I think it affected my late mom more than it affected me and my family because they, they knew who I was. And I'm just, it was this guy from Wisconsin that came out from my dream to go to California to, to get in acting. And so I, you know, I've always stuck true to those goals. Even today I hustle with so many shows and I sold the show and I, all my dreams are coming true. It took forever, but I, I think you, you've got to understand that people they, sometimes people just don't want to like you or they just want to, especially in LA, they just don't want people to achieve and, uh, or especially achieve greatness. And I just want to achieve partial greatness. And, uh, th that's the hardest part, Rachel, is that people make judgments and they, and they shouldn't, right. you know, well, they make judgments based on the narrative that you're given by the media or by the circumstance, right. and that doesn't actually have anything to do with who you are and where you come from. So I actually want to get into that a little bit with you. Let T yeah. Tell people where you came from. You said you're from Wisconsin. What did you want to do when you grew up? Like, how did you get to L.A.? Well, I basically was I, I was pretty decent in sports and I played uh, baseball and I got a partial scholarship to Wisconsin Eau Claire to play baseball. And I was pretty decent. So I said, you know what? I want to move to California and go to this school called Cal State Fullerton. And that was the number one baseball school. So I my buddy and I drove out left my my family and i just said i'm going to california and uh they said you'll be back in three months anyways <laughs> i get to cal state fullerton and i try out uh, i went out for the team and these guys were gigantic and i didn't rachel i didn't get whiskers till i was 38 years old so i wasn't developed yet but i was really wiry so i could throw <laughs> pretty quick but i said i i can't make this team i'm, I'm not going to make it so i started getting into plays and hosting events and I said, I, back at Wisconsin, Eau Claire, I had my own TV show called Cato and Friends. I said, you know what? I could do this. I could probably get a show. And uh, my very first audition ever when I moved to L.A. was a, a Coke commercial, and I got it. And I said, this is kind of easy. 
unfortunately, when I did the commercial, I shot it, got my SAG card, but they cut me out of the commercial. And then I got oh. another one and another one. Three consecutive commercials I got, which back then would have been like $300,000. I got cut out of all three. And I said, this is a tough business. But I, I stuck with it. So then I said, you know what? I'm just going to pursue this goal when I start getting bit parts. And I, I've said this on other podcasts and other shows. The week before the murders happened, I went to an academy for acting, but the week before uh, the murders happened, I, I tested for a film. And my friend produced a film. He gave me the script three months in advance. And this is a buddy of mine. He worked for New Line Cinema. So I had a life before. I did auditions all the time. I went to film premieres, but no one knew Cato yet. But I did everything, did red carpets. So I tested for a film called Dumb and Dumber. And it was my uh, buddy, Aaron Meyerson, who produced the film. And uh, I was reading for the Jeff Daniels Road. My hair was long. If you remember Jeff Daniels, is, uh, uh, what's his name? Lloyd. Um, it was Harry and Lloyd. So, right. uh, so anyways, Rick Montgomery casted it and I, I read for other parts and I said, Oh my God, I'm getting really close to my goal. I'm getting really good castings. And the murder happened. My whole life was shut down. I, I sort of became a caricature right. after I you know, testified. So, but before you became famous for being Cato Kalen, um, you were a struggling actor then. So, but was this yeah. based on something you really wanted to do? You're like, I really want to be an actor, or you just had this personality which you still have now, which is so great, and people really liked you, and you're great looking. I mean, you're. I mean, yeah. I googled you. You're. Are you 64 years old? I, I am. You I look am. like you're 40. I mean, you look amazing. How do you do that? Oh. That's a, whole, that's a whole nother podcast on anti-aging, I, but still. But, still. But yeah, and I don't have the money. Obviously, I can't do but no, but nothing. I've never done any of that. Basically, even back in the day of uh, in the 1989 and 90. And, and by the way, when I was doing that, I was also hosting car shows. So I've always been a host and making, you know, and that was a Screen Actors Guild job because I got it through my old agent, Sheila Manning. And I so I start doing all these things, but I always juiced i've never never not had a juice machine and i really it's amazing i did it i did everything before it became trends i used to eat rice cakes they used to be 25 cents that's the truth and i said oh these are, these are pretty good with salt and the sesame seeds <laughs> but i i ate all these things and i and I, I maybe it's fortunate if i drink anything i'm not a big drinker because when i get a drink or two in me i get an incredible migraine so i never i never really had that in my body and it just was always fun. Everybody goes, get drunk. You're drunk, aren't you? I go, no, it's just, it's just the way I am. <laughs> so it's it's funny that I never did all the things when I went to college that everybody was doing. And I'm, the hindsight, I'm glad I didn't. But I, so, but that's, I appreciate you saying that. And, um, well, you yeah, had I, such I boyish great. looks and you still do is the point. So, okay. Oh, but you, but you didn't necessarily want to be this big actor or you, or you found that when you got to LA. Thanks for watching so far. If you like what you see here and you want to finish this episode, please go onto my new Patreon, which is www.patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. You will find exclusive content from me to you that we haven't played anywhere else and you won't be finding it everywhere else. So please give it a try. Sign up for Patreon at www.patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. That's spelled M-I-S-S -S, understood with Rachel Yucatel.